Mark founded the company in 1990, 1999, and his intent at that time uh, was to, to make uh, from, from a locally grown seeds uh, a bio uh, lubricant. And, and that's where he started, and, and, and actually was to make uh, uh, work, uh, lubricants that could be used in farming. And so if there was a spill, it wouldn't uh, contaminate the soil. If I'm not mistaken, it started with cranberry seeds, right? Well, yeah. And th so what happened is he started working in, in the cranberry industry, and he actually made a, a, a lubricant uh, that was able to be used as hydraulic fluid to be used in the cranberry bogs, so that if there was a spill, uh, it wouldn't spoil the cranberry bog. So, but anyway, he, uh, his research took him in different directions, and he started uh, looking at more of the fruit, vegetable, and herb seeds, and some of the grain seeds, uh, and he uh, formed uh, some relationships with two doctors at the University of Minnesota, and also with Dr. Lucy Yu, who at the time was at the University of Colorado, and today she's at the uh, University of Maryland. And um, they, they started doing a lot of work around these seed types. Great. Coming back to you. Sorry we didn't ignore you, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> You are an expert, a world expert in something called epigenetics and nutrigenomics. I am sure, you know, can you explain that for the people who've never heard such words before? Sure. Thank you, Jerry. Now, you asked me, Jerry, about nutrigenomics and epigenetics. I think one of the things we're finding out now that nutrition, uh, back in ancient Greece, people said, or Hippocrates said that food could be your medicine. Well, now we find out that it can really be true, but we're all a little bit different. None of us are exactly the same, and some of us, food acts differently. For some of you women, when you get old, if you have too much caffeine, you might get osteoporosis. For other people, you, uh, uh, caffeine may have no effect at all. For some of you, caffeine may put you at risk for a heart attack. Others has no effect at all. So now we can test your genetics and we can make a prediction as to who might be benefited from a certain food and who might have harm. And so you can now sign up for genetic tests uh, all around the world. Maybe you've heard of 23andMe and you can see which genes you have and certain foods. So we call that epigenetics because the science of epigenetics means the gene expression. Sometimes genes are turned on and sometimes the genes are turned off. You all know about a butterfly and a caterpillar. The caterpillar has genes for the wings, but the wing genes are not turned on until it becomes a butterfly. Caterpillars have wing genes. They turn on when it becomes a butterfly. The butterfly turns into the caterpillar and has leg genes, many, many leg genes, but they're turned off when it's a butterfly. So we're learning now how we can regulate those genes and we can do it with food. And now there's a worldwide epidemic of obesity. Some of it is due to chemicals in our environment. And what we're finding now is that sometimes it affects our genes, and they can last for multiple generations. And it's important that we understand that. Eat a healthy diet. Eat, I always say, eat real food. Uh, seed Plus is a good food. Nutrition provides beneficial uh, things for your diet. But I think that's what's coming in the future. We're going to be able to treat or prevent disease with foods and control your genes and benefit people in a different way than taking uh, medicine. Thank you, Prof. Okay, they coming back to you. We know that under Botanic Innovations, you guys have a patent on a blended seed oil. Okay, can you expand a little bit about that? Why, well, sure. As I, I left off from the last question, and Mark was working with uh, two professors at the University of Minnesota, the uh, two doctors. So there were two seed oils that were involved. There was black, organic black cumin seed, uh, in, which has got a, uh, you know, there's a lot of history of that particular uh, seed type and its uses for, you know, thousands of years. And there's probably more recent research on, on uh, 
black raspberry seed oil. But they're very, both are diverse in antioxidants and have a, a very nice, you know, complementary omega-369 profile. So we, we did some testing with the early ORAC testing uh, from Brunswick Laboratories back in, back in 2004 uh, on both of the uh, seed oil types. And so we decided to blend them together. And I'm going to use some numbers here just so you'll kind of understand. Uh, the antioxidant value was, let's say, 19 on the, on the black cumin seed oil and 21 on the black raspberry seed oil. So you'd expect when you did a 50-50 blend and test it, you would probably have a, an ORAC value of 20. It turned out we had an ORAC value of 28. So they, you know, they repeated the test many times, and we ended up uh, filing a patent with the two doctors at the University of Minnesota uh, and, and with uh, Mark Mueller as the uh, lead investigator on it. So, um, so does that, that mean that no other product in the world can have this combination of oil, right? Uh, patented? It, it is patented, correct. So, and in, in also in the patent uh, is that if, uh, so it's not just using those two oils. The patent does require that uh, any time to use the patent, you have to use black cumin seed oil. But when you blend that with any other of our cold pressed seed oils, there's a synergistic effect. And we've also found that the more oils that you blend together, the higher the antioxidant level. You also have a proprietary uh, trademark nature fresh cold press process. Uh, how important is that and how did that come about? Oh, we do. And it's, uh, you know, there's probably not a lot of uh, magic to cold pressing. It's kind of everything that happens before that. It's, uh, you know, being able to source seeds uh, and set up standards for the seeds uh, and, and, and get them in the house at the right time. Uh, make sure that they're at the right moisture content when it's time to press them. Uh, following, uh, w you know, we are a certified organic plant, uh, so we have to make sure that uh, we adhere to all the uh, uh, USDA guidelines on uh, on on, uh, on on our uh, organic certificate. Um, and and then uh, the way we store the material, you know, our we are our warehouses are heated and air conditioned. So the temperature uh, doesn't vary for, by, more than any, by more than 10 degrees. A lot of people ask us about where we get our raw material, the seeds, just the four seeds? Uh, United States. The, uh, the red grape seeds come from the West Coast. And by the way, the red grape seeds are, have not gone through a ferment, fermentation process. They're not used in winemaking. Uh, and then the, the, uh, the cranberry seeds come from Wisconsin. You know, it's a, I didn't even know this. I'm from Massachusetts originally. I thought that's where they grew most of the cranberries. Uh, but most of the cranberries in the U.S. are grown in Wisconsin, where our plant is. Uh, in, in the uh, fourth seed type are black cumin, organic black cumin seeds that uh, come either from Turkey or from uh, Egypt. And we, and we do uh, order and receive only certified organic seeds. Uh, and these are certified by an EU agency. Okay, thanks, Dick. Professor, you know we have a four-seed formula, and we have seen many testimonials, and you have met some of the people who have used it, both orally as well as topically, you know. Tell us a little bit what you think is working there. Uh, thank you, Jerry. And I, I talked to maybe 10 or 15 of you yesterday about uh, how you see the benefit, uh, particularly on things like skin uh, or maybe some inflammation. One of the things that happens during inflammation is that your body produces oxidation. And it creates, uh, you know, the redness that you see when you have uh, some injury on your skin. Well, your body is producing inflammation. And during you inflammation, you have oxidation. And the antioxidants that are present in the seed oil plus formula can uh, prevent the oxidative damage. Oxidative damage uh, can actually harm the cell outer membrane. And when the cell outer membrane is damaged, it gets leaky. And when it gets leaky, sometimes blood can leak out of a blood vessel, and that's what causes the red color in inflammation and swelling. So the antioxidants can uh, prevent the oxidative damage to the tissue. And also, uh, the oils that are present can uh, support the immune system. So the, uh, a strong immune system can, uh, can help the body protect itself from uh, germs, from viruses, and keep you healthy. So the two, the antioxidant 
and the immune support and the essential oils working together can repair the damage or prevent the damage. So they work together. Thank you. Thanks, Prof. You know, we also have children, women uh, taking the product, and we also have people on medication. How safe is uh, Exoso Plus? This is a food product. And so it's just, you could, eat, you could eat raspberries by the handful. You could eat cranberries by the handful. You could eat black cumin seed as a food if you're a child or if you're an adult or a man or a woman. And I wouldn't have any uh, concerns about safety. If someone does have a concern, if they have a rare or unusual disease, they should ask their medical doctor. But I think we should always remember that this is a food product. And uh, we, none of us would hesitate to eat any of the ingredients. Uh, if we had a plate in front of me today with, with all these ingredients, uh, my children would be eating the raspberries or the cumin or the cranberries, uh, and I would be eating them, and I wouldn't have any concern at all. Some people asked about the packaging in terms of the one ounce and uh, smaller volume. And can you explain that a little bit in terms of the water and all this? Sure, why sure. Well, our product team got together and developed a team with the active ingredients that we've talked about of you know, the four seed fiber types, uh, two oil types, and then the D-ribose and the transazeratrol. And at that point, we hired a food scientist in Los Angeles uh, to help us put together uh, the product to help for the, for the taste and for the mouthfeel and, and also for shelf life. Uh, and so uh, we, we gave her the, we thought we would want two ounce and she came back to us after a couple of weeks and told us, you know what, I'm really afraid of a, you know, too much water activity. Uh, you know, the more that water you put in a product, the more chance there is of a bacteria, yeast, uh, and or mold growth. So she convinced us that we should go to a one ounce product and that's where we, we ended up. So all, all we removed was water, none of the active ingredients. So this is to reduce the chance for bacterial contamination especially if you're shipping it all over the world and things like that, right? Correct. And another question for you is, some people, not here, but some people say that this product is made in China, in Malaysia. No. No. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about where it's manufactured and who does it and how? And R right, so the, uh, the, uh, of, the raw, of, the, of the actives, uh, the, the four seed fiber types, and the two oils are made in, in our plant in Spooner, Wisconsin. And, you know, they're, they're all certified as, as halal and, um, and non-GMO. So, but all of the, uh, all the raw materials uh, we order, uh, we get the uh, certificates for. We do heavy metal, and test, heavy, heavy metal and pesticide testing on all the active ingredients on every batch. Uh, so we are toxin-free, pesticide-free, herbicide-free. That, that's correct, and we are we are CGMP alcohol-free. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know that we had that was a, a little thing we had to do to make the halal certification. We had to uh, do a reformulation of the of the flavoring. You know, flavorings a lot of times have quite a bit of alcohol in them. So we had to. Uh, make, I think they still make it with alcohol, but it can't go above a certain threshold when it's put in the product to be halal certified. Okay, great. Coming back to you, Prof. The special seed that we have inside, the cranberry seed, uh, can you explain a little bit about that? It's supposed, it, it helps in certain uh, activities in the body. It's, got, it's rich in omega-3. But cranberries have been used uh, for a long time. I mean, maybe hundreds of years or longer uh, for urinary tract infections. It's common sometimes if, if a woman has a urinary tract infection, the Medical doctor will say, well, drink some cranberry juice because that prevents the bacteria from sticking to their urinary tract. And, and uh, in addition to those, that benefit, there's also the important essential oils. And we call them essential oils because uh, there's two kinds of oils, essential and non-essential. Essential oils are the oils that we don't make in our body. And the only way we get them is by eating them. So it has some essential oils, and uh, they're beneficial, like the omega oils. Um, and uh, so they're, they're really valuable in addition to the benefits for urinary health. Okay, fantastic. So they, going forward, our, or your relationship with Exa Global and the collaboration, how do you view that going forward? As I said at the beginning, we're really excited about working with Axa Global 
you know, the longer we work with you folks, the the more we sure are that uh, we've uh, we we've, we've bet on the right horse. You know, this is just going to be a terrific relationship. Okay. <laughs>